you want to know a quick and easy and fun method of creating awesome D&D adventures that your players will have a super fun time exploring? Let's talk about point crawls. This video is brought to you by my Patreon, where every month I create a new tabletop role-playing game adventure zine slash PDF. This month's adventure is called Flick Silver Pin's Guide to the Sky Garden. It's got astral giants, dodo bird knights, three-eyed frogs. What else does it got? <laughs> <laughs> There's a super powerful magic item and a legendary thief character, all kinds of fun stuff. And while working on this adventure, I've stumbled across what I think is my favorite way of creating an adventure, and that is the point crawl. So point crawl is basically uh, an overland adventure where the players are moving from point to point like points of interest, I guess, is, is where the name comes from. Usually there's a starting point and an ending point, and then there's a bunch of points in the middle that are all connected by different pathways. You know, each point usually has uh, multiple exits and entrances. And actually, now that I'm describing this, it's basically like creating a dungeon that's out in the world. You know, instead of rooms and hallways, you're creating locations out in the environment and pathways or roads to get to and from those locations. So in this video, I'm gonna be drawing a map of the Sky Garden, all of the points of interest and the pathways in between. And I'm gonna take you through the process of making the map, but also explain my process for coming up with the point crawl and how easy and fun it is from a writing and design perspective, and also how that will translate to playing it at the table. So the very first thing to start with is a list of all the locations, the possible places that the players will be visiting. As the video goes on, I'll talk a little bit more about how I come up with the encounters inside those locations, but for the map purposes, start with the list of locations. Then I'm just gonna make a really rough version of the map. And I guess if you're planning it out and running it yourself, maybe this is what you would have behind your DM screen. It's just a, a circle with the location or the encounter and then pathways to and from all of the, the points of interest, all of the circles on the map. So the way I like to plan these things out is there's always a starting point and an end point. The starting point is where the players will be entering into this environment. And then the end point is sort of the, the quest goal, where the players know that they're heading towards. But you know, it's not just a straight line from the starting point to the end point. All the points in the middle will have multiple connections to and from those places. And this is what gives the players choices about which way they want to go, if they want to avoid this area, or they definitely want to go to this area. If they want to avoid this place that they can see coming up and go a different direction, or maybe they they see a, a place off in the distance and they want to head straight towards that area. Having it be a bunch of points that all interconnect in the middle of this place, it gives the players a, a feeling of exploration, but on your end, on the, on the Dungeon Master's side of it, you can have everything planned out so you feel super prepared for whatever direction they go in. Okay, now that I have my map all planned out, it's time for me to jump into Photoshop and start actually drawing this thing. So my theory for drawing a point crawl map is the locations are the most important thing and then it also needs to be clear how to get from point to point. So the locations and then the pathways from the locations, that's what I got to focus on in this drawing. So that being said, I'm starting off this map drawing by illustrating the points of interest the actual encounters. I'm just filling in the circles from the previous map with an illustration. So this map is gonna be a reference in the zine for the dungeon master who's running this adventure. So I want each of the points of interest to be super clear to how they can correspond to the description in the book. And, and my hope is that if you read through this adventure, and kind of have a good grasp of what's going on in this place, you'll be able to just look at the map and almost run the adventure from the map. So, you know, maybe that's a good goal to have if you're creating your own point crawl and you do the, the sort of circle and line pathways map. You know, maybe you can just put enough notes onto that to, to run your whole adventure straight from a single sheet of paper with the map on it. So for the actual map drawing, I'm not worried at all about the scale of things. 
Uh, this is like a, a representational map. Think of it like um, like an amusement park map. You know, so when you when you go to an amusement park, it has all the rides like illustrated in a super fun way, and like the big rides are huge, and it's not really to scale. Nothing is to scale. You know, it just has all the places you want to go, and then the pathways of how to navigate the theme park. That's basically what I'm creating with this point crawl map. Okay, so let's talk about these points of interest and what these actual locations that I'm illustrating are. So the Sky Garden is the penultimate adventure in my Darkness Below campaign that I'm publishing month to month over on the Patreon. So it starts with the Dragon Town zine and the Sky Garden is the ninth out of the 10th zine. There's gonna be 10 zines in this campaign setting and Sky Garden is number nine out of 10. So in this point crawl adventure, the players are traveling to this cloud garden place. It's home to the astral giants and they're, they're going there to find this super special magical item that will help them fight the darkness below. Who's the big bad evil being of this campaign setting. So these astral giants live up in this cloud and each point on the map is some sort of encounter either with one of the giants or one of the other crazy things that live in this sky garden. So as I'm making a list of encounters, there's two things I'm really thinking about. The first thing, and probably the most important, is coming up with some fun ideas that the players get to experience. And then the second thing that I kind of layer on top of that is how does it describe the story of this place, of the Sky Garden? So one of the first points of interest on this map is about uh, the players running into these greedy, hungry vultures that uh, are super precious about this, these star crumbs. And, uh, and then I guess the astral giant that's like paying no attention to all the, the little creatures at its feet because it's, it's busy plucking stars out of the sky to eat them for dinner. It's a fun encounter for the players and it says a lot about what's going on in this place. But then there's also no resolution to this scenario. You know, it's all, it's all set up. I have no idea how the players are gonna interact with this or what they're gonna do with this information. I'm just throwing out this encounter and seeing how they deal with this situation. And I guess backing up a second to when I'm planning out the order of the locations. Like I said, there's always a start and end point. So the starting point sort of needs to front load a lot of the story of this place, you know, give an introduction to what's going on in this sky garden. And obviously the final point where everything leads back to has the magic item that the players are looking for or whatever the, the quest goal is for your players. But then everything in between can kind of more slowly reveal the story of this place. And I really try to have all of these middle points of interest they don't have anything that is required knowledge or a required item or anything like that to get to the end point. It's just extra information or extra stuff that will help the players once they get to the end point, but not completely necessary. Because honestly, your players aren't gonna go to every point on the map, unless they're like super explorers or something. They're definitely gonna skip some places. All right, now that all of the major locations are drawn, it's time to connect them with pathways and sort of fill in all of the in-between details. So the Sky Garden, like its name suggests, is a, a, just a, a giant garden, a bunch of plants growing out of this huge, cloud area. I'm basically just filling in all the negative space with these plants that don't really serve any purpose. Well, there is a random table in the zine that has a bunch of magical properties that some of these plants might have, but really this is just filler stuff. So if you think about the amusement park map, you know, it's all the, they're, they're just random trees and like building facades that are put in between the main places to show that there is some sort of distance between point to point. So as I'm filling in these details, I'm, I'm realizing I'm not super happy with the actual drawing I've got going here. And that's because I really want the points of interest and the pathways to stand out. And with all this detail, the, the pathways are getting a little lost. You know, I want a dungeon master that's running this adventure to be able to look down at the map at the point that the players are at and see, okay, from this location, I can move to either this point or this point, and that's like super clear. So I'm redrawing the clouds to make, make it very, very clear where the pathways are. And I guess I am kind of losing a little bit of that overgrown garden feel to what this adventure is, but I think, you know, the main thing is showing the points of interest, the locations and encounters, 
and then the pathways to that. The overgrown garden part of it gets made up for in the descriptions of the areas. So I'm having so much fun drawing this map, thinking about these encounters and this adventure. And I really, really hope that this video and this map have inspired you to give creating a point crawl adventure a shot. Really the writing part is so, so much fun because you're really just making a big list of encounters and putting just little bits of information into each one that when you combine all of these points of interest into to one big thing, it paints this amazing picture of what this place is all about. And it also creates a really fun way for your players to explore a space without overwhelming you as a dungeon master with too many options or, or too many directions the players can go in and then you have to make stuff up on the fly and that's always hard. Anyway, I just think this is a really fun way of creating an adventure and I hope you give it a shot. So like I said before, this video is possible because of my Patreon. If you'd like to get this Sky Garden adventure, go check out the Patreon. If you'd like to support me making these videos and also get adventures like Flick Silverpin's Guide to the Sky Garden, go check out the Patreon. I'm super, super proud of all the work I've got going on there. If you do decide to write and run your own point crawl adventure, if you make a map or not, hit me up on social media. I want to hear all about it. I super, super, super appreciate you taking the time to check out this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!